Okay, so in this case, we have a velocity graph, and we're given this series of velocities that has a line, three lines. The first thing we want to do is one, find when the particle as a, is at rest. At the time the particle is at rest, it means when is the velocity equal to zero? Well, this is the velocity graph, so right at this value right here, at t equals one second, the velocity is at rest. The velocity crosses the x-axis. Okay, the next question says, what is the acceleration at t equal three? Well, the acceleration is simply the velocity derivative of the velocity. And we want to find the derivative at three. Well, the derivative is the slope. Well, and at three, we want to find the slope at three. Well, you can see it's a straight line. It goes up, rise by one, run to the right of three. So that is equal to one third meters per second squared is the, vol is the acceleration because that's the slope of the line, the derivative of that line. What is the acceleration when uh, the acceleration when t is six? Well, again, that's the velocity, the derivative of the velocity at six. Well, here is six. The slope of that line is horizontal, and so that is zero. D, if the initial position of the particle is at zero, we wish to find how far the initial position, what is the position when t equals two? So at this value here, well, I know that I want to find the integral of the velocity from zero to two dt. That's going to be the position. I know it starts at zero. Well, this is a positive area, which is related to the position. This area of this triangle, well, base is one, height is two times a half. That area is one, a positive one. And then this area of this triangle here is a negative one. It's not looking for total distance. It's looking for where the position is. So I start at zero. I travel one. I pause. So I'm at rest. And then I go backwards one. So I end up in the same position. So what is the position? It's going to be zero. If I do E, if I do E, it's saying what's the position in the, when t equals five? Well, I know this is positive one and this is negative one. I'm back at zero here. So I really want to find the area this area here, because I know the first bit is already zero. And this is position, so I'm not worried about, I am worried about positive and negative, so I'm going to go zero to five of vt. This is good notation to use. And when I do that, I know I want this area here. And so if I think about area of this part, I know that the first parts cancel out, because that's zero. I know that I have three squares here, so that's three. And then this here is our triangle. I have half the base is through the base is three. The height is one, and half of that is this triangle here. So that is 1.5 plus three triangle air uh, square. Sorry, is going to be 4.5 meters negative because it's f away from the zero. It's in the negative direction because that's below the x-axis. A negative. 4.5. Okay, so now let's continue on here. If I look at now the total distance traveled in the first second, f, I want the distance traveled now. Here is the first second. So I'm going from 0 to 1 of vt. The integral of that, well, that's going to be 1 meter. That's the distance traveled in the first second. G now says, what is the total distance traveled in the first seven seconds? Well, total distance implies make everything positive. Okay, so when I do that, I have to add up all this area here and make it a positive value. To do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area from 0 to 1 
of VT dt plus the area, the absolute area, because I want to make it positive, from 1 to 7 of vt dt. So I want to add those values up. Well, I know that this part here is 1 plus, well, breaking up this area, I know that this part here here I have one, two, three, four, five squares. That's five. Plus this triangle here is one. And this one here we already figured out to be 1.5. Now because they're below the axis, they're really all negative values. Negative, negative, and negative. And so when I think about this, I get equal to 1 plus, well, this is negative 7.5. Absolute value of that, 1 plus 7.5 is 8.5 meters in total. And that's just using the area features, the fact that the area underneath the curve is the position. And total distance traveled means consider everything to be positive. Okay, and finally, h part. h says, the second part all has this velocity. Write the expression for the acceleration. Well, if y2 is equal to t squared times v of t, if I want to find acceleration, that means I want to find the derivative of y2. If I do the derivative of this, this is going to be the product rule, because there's two functions multiplied. So 2t times velocity plus t squared times the derivative of the velocity. This is an expression here. This is i. That's an expression for the acceleration. If I want to find the acceleration when t equals 1, well, that's going to be 2 times 1 times the velocity at 1 plus 1 squared times the velocity prime at 1. Well, 2 times the velocity at 1, that's this curve here, that is 0. Plus 1 times the derivative of that 1, that means the slope of this line here, because the slope is the derivative. The slope of that line is, oh, I rise down 2 into the right 1, that's negative 2 negative 2, and so my acceleration is 0 minus 2 is minus 2 meters per second squared. So we use our graph and the ideas of the derivative being the slope and the integral being the area, and we can figure out lots about the kinematics.